Hello, everybody. Welcome in. My name is Sin. I'm sure most of you know me. If you somehow stumbled upon this video as a new person, welcome in. I hope you stick around. We have a lot to talk about today. I feel like I don't make enough of these videos where I just sit down and chat with YouTube because normally if I have something to say, I just say it on stream. So... There's that. If you ever just wanted to hear me ramble or talk about something or ask me a question, definitely just show up to a stream. Even if you don't want to watch the stream, show up, ask me, I'll answer your question and you can be on your merry way. But I don't make enough of these videos where we just sit down and talk. If you've seen the title of this video, we're here to talk about Veilguard. I have been waiting with bated breath for the early access review embargo to lift. I feel like everyone has, whether you're just a fan of Bioware or if you're an actual fan of Dragon Age or even if you're a fan of Mass Effect and you wanted to play a Dragon Age game. We have all been waiting, just clamoring at our nails, waiting to see the fate of this game, basically. And a lot of that comes down to we live in an age where if a game does not perform to publisher expectations, it is the creatives that normally get punished. It is normally creative studios and actual development studios that get entirely disbanded because the publisher didn't roll out the game correctly. We've been seeing that a lot. I'm looking at you, Ubisoft, for dis uh, disbanding the creators of the Prince of Persia game, despite it doing well. But you know what? We're not going to talk about that. We're talking about Veilguard right now. I want Veilguard to succeed. Based off the reviews that I've seen, I believe it will succeed. I know there's going to be a lot of con controversial opinions about this. I have been watching reviews for the past two days that are both positive and negative. I've been watching reviews from people who want the game to succeed and have from the beginning. I've watched reviews from people who were critical of the game at preview. They got an early access code. They played it, ended up really enjoying it. And then I've also watched the negative reviews. Skill up uh, was not impressed with the game. I watched their review completely through. I thought they had a lot of really valid criticisms. Um, but their criticisms are things that I can live with, basically. And I feel like that is what this is going to come down to. I don't blame anyone for not wanting to buy the game and feeling like it doesn't live up to their expectations. Because at the end of the day, video games are expensive, okay? Video games are very expensive, and I don't want people spending their money on something that they know is going to make them unhappy, and that is where my opinion comes in. I know that I am going to enjoy this game. From what I have seen, from what I have heard, I know people who do work at Bioware or have previously in the past. I am excited for this game. I'm hoping for its success. Will it be game of the year? I really don't know because I'm still working my way through Final Fantasy Rebirth and that honestly in my opinion as someone who has played the other new releases of the year I feel like Rebirth has it in the bag a lot more compared to um, Stellar Blade which I thought was a masterpiece and Black Myth Wukong which is a very good game but it's not a long lasting game that I do believe leaves the impression of something that deserves to be called game of the year and neither does Stellar Blade in my opinion. So I think if Veilguard does well, it is going to come down between Veilguard and Rebirth. So a couple things while we're here, I have not watched the official trailer, the final one that came out in the past week for Dragon Age Veilguard. So we are going to be watching that together. We're gonna to chat about it a little bit. And then I'm gonna give you guys some more community updates because there's been a lot of questions about kind of where I've been at. There's been a very much lack of content across all of my channels and I do need to address that. So I'm gonna just package everything together in a cute little bow and throw it at y'all and y'all can skip around to the different chapter points and read it if you want. But we're gonna be looking at the Dragon Age Veilguard trailer first, so let's jump into that. Events are weaving together quickly. The fate of the world shall be decided Oh, soon. I do not miss fighting Dragon Age dragons, let me tell you. They're so scary. Two ancient elven gods. They were horrific tyrants. I like the look the of that one, though. It looks eldritch. Coming. Ooh! No tentacle. No. Artifacts that have been dormant for centuries are awakening. Shut it down. I'm trying. Oh, I do have my gripes with the character styles. I will say that. 
stir more easily than they should. Oh god, I am not looking forward to dragon fights. I don't even know if you can be a knight enchanter here, but knight enchanters are how I survive those fights. Take me to Taventer. Cults gathering power. Dark spawn are charging to Weishaupt. You're the only force that can stop this. But not if they burn your castle to the ground. Get down! It will not be easy. But you are this world's only hope. Ah, soulless. I am a soulless romancer. I believe in all of us. Beric! Okay, okay. Obviously, this was a very cinematic story trailer. I have seen a little bit of the actual, um, and of course, there are some of the reviews that have come now. We got... Let's see, Games Cast. I did watch the Kind of Funny review. I definitely recommend that one. I'm going to put a list. Mm, sorry, guys. I'm going to put a list of the different um, reviewers who I really enjoy. I thought their reviews were really solid, whether they were positive or negative. I'm going to give you guys options of both if you haven't been looking around at reviews. These will not have spoilers in them because I've also been avoiding spoiler reviews. Ones that I will not recommend are things from, like, Flextra Life that use grifters on Twitter as their sources rather than, I don't know, actual gamers and actual game journos. That was the trailer to Dragon Age Veilguard, the very final one before we get the release on Thursday. I will not be playing it till Friday. If you want to watch me play it, if you don't want to buy it from yourself, but you do just kind of want to watch someone go through it and judge it on your own time, I will be streaming it. Keep in mind, I no longer stream on this main YouTube channel. Um, I had some algorithm issues that I was acknowledging because I was keeping some of my streamed content on this channel and it wasn't making the algorithm happy and it was making me unhappy and it was making y'all unhappy. So we do have a secondary channel now that is called Synthetic Live. That is my live channel essentially. It's where all of my stream VODs go. I'm slowly putting everything up there. I'm trying to catch up to all the streams that I had that were purely on Twitch and put them all over on YouTube because Twitch does not keep VODs, which I think is ridiculous. But we are slowly making the pilgrimage over to the YouTube live channel. So everything that you guys watch on this channel is purely pre-recorded. It is me sitting alone in a room and playing video games. And everything that is over there are things that I do live. But back to Veilguard. I hope for the success of this game. I really do. I have some gripes with it myself, just some things that I noticed right off the bat. I'm not the biggest fan of the character model style. I know that it is supposed to be very stylized, but I just, I don't enjoy it. Yeah, that's just me. I just don't enjoy the way the character styles look. And it's one of those things that, and I'm sure some of you will understand what I'm saying. When you get into a game and you get fully immersed in it, you start to ignore certain environmental things and they just become normal to you essentially. Like you adapt to seeing them and you kind of get over them because there's so many different styles of gameplay at this point. Um, so I'm sure it won't bother me as time goes on, but it is something that I've noticed. And another thing that I do find a little bit annoying, but knowing what I know, it kind of makes sense. There are companion, not commentaries, conversations that are written very dry. It, I don't feel like some of the companion combos that I have seen in the past um, or have I seen come out of this game match up with what I know Mass Effect, not Mass Effect, my words are getting jumbled now, what I know Bioware is capable of, especially being a massive Mass Effect fan myself, that's where that came from. Listening to your party banter when you're, you as the main character, Shepard, is not engaged is one of the best parts about that game because they have their own 
own relationships going on. And it is my favorite thing about Mass Effect, how well the characters are built up. And you do get a little bit of that in Inquisition. If you take certain party members out with you for like long walks to go to missions or whatever, they will have different things that they say to one another. I distinctly remember Iron Bull and Solus had a chess game that they would say out loud and like they were playing it mentally with each other that I thought was really cool of them. So just little things like that that I've heard, I have not seen for myself. I did not get an early access code. I was not invited to a preview. I am not getting paid in any way by BioWare. What people simply need to understand if you're like, oh, since just saying this to, I don't know, for people at BioWare, people at EA to like her, I couldn't care less. What I care about is video games. At the end of the day, what I care about is video games. Video games have been my entire life. They've been a safe space for me. And I say that in the sense that video games have always brought me happiness no matter what else is going on in my life. So I just want a good game and I want people to stop punishing creative studios for decisions that publishers like EA and Ubisoft are making. That is my end all be all. That's my flat line. That's the end of my sentence. I have a lot of hope for this game. I plan to really enjoy it. I think I am going to splurge and get the creator's edition because one thing, or the collector's edition, because one thing that keeps me up at night is the fact that I don't own the collector's edition of Baldur's Gate 3. I went to play Baldur's Gate 3 not thinking that I was going to enjoy it because I knew nothing about Larian. I didn't know anything about their prior IPs. I didn't know Baldur's Gate. I thought that I hated turn-based games until I played Baldur's Gate 3 and it became my entire life and now I'm wishing that I had that dang statue that's the drow. It's like a really famous drow from D&D lore running up to a mind flayer and I, I'm so sad to this day. I, I mourn the loss of that collector's edition and I even wish that I had the collector's edition of Wukong. I really want to start buying more collector's editions. Will it substantially impact my wallet yes it will but also those little things are what keep me happy i like having memorabilia from the games that we play that i really enjoy i have a little sephiroth i have my little collection of hollow knight stuff we got spider-man 2 and the steel case i really like steel cases we got rex my boy uh, my little bd8 unit oh, i have another sephiroth over there that one was a gift and a spyro and i want just more stuff to just show how much I do love this industry as a whole. So on to the more personal notes because we've passed the veil guard proportion and now it's going into where the hell has sin been for so long? Um, uploads have been very, very sparse lately. Uh, if you've joined my lives, you know a little bit more about this than anyone else. Earlier this year, literally in the beginning of the year in January, I switched from one side of my company to the other. I no longer fill the same role in my company that I used to, but I am much, much happier in my job now. I work in public relations. I work in community engagement and community management and social media management and the whole slew of things just revolving around public relations from a corporate brand standpoint. And I do love my job. I actually really enjoy my job, which means I spend a lot of time doing Doing my job even on my off hours because if the client needs something I do it so it's been difficult kind of balancing the amount of emotional out a emotional and mental output you have when you like your job and you want to do very well in it and then immediately have to sign on and then be entertaining especially because if you work in public relations or marketing or sales, anything that's very people facing forward, you are always on, you're always an active side of yourself. The, uh I, I call it the party throwing side of my brain, basically, like the party host side of my brain where you feel like you have to always be the life of the party, but also keep everyone else in check. That's what I feel like at work. And then I never get to turn that side of me off during the work week because that is the same part of my brain that is off when I'm pre-recording content or when I'm streaming. So I will admit that 
content really got swept away from me as I got a little bit more comfortable at work. I've had a little bit of health issues going on, nothing serious, please no one worry about those types of things, just things that have been making me very fatigued and very drowsy. We're working on those. I now have a proper Adderall uh, prescription, so that has been helping a lot with learning to balance my workflow. And as of right now, I am working on a brand new content schedule where if you are a paid member of Patreon or if you're a part of my YouTube members, then you have three new videos that will come out each week. Maybe at some point I'll be able to boost that to four. Technically it is four for Sunday Scaries, but Sunday Scaries are for everyone. And in that same vein, if you are a general part of my community, if you don't pay, that's completely fine because all my content will get to you eventually. You also have four new videos to watch each week. Three of them will be coming off of early access. And then the fourth one is a Sunday Scaries, which is just us playing horror demos on Sunday or short horror games on Sunday because I do love horror. So I am trying to get back on a solid content schedule. That guy, way you guys will not be without content unless something happens. I know that a lot of people have been waiting for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I am working on that. And when I said uh, or was about to imply you guys will have content unless something out of my hands happens, some of you do know I live in Florida. We had two back-to-back -back hurricanes, and that really kind of threw me off when it came to trying to balance Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and then all of the new releases that are coming out that I'm also very interested in because I like playing video games and I want to play all of them all the time and I wish that I knew Shadow Clone Jutsu so that I could just make nine of me and we can all play different games at the same time. But I am working on that. I am going to um, continue working with Eric, who is the editor of those videos, to get those out because that is such a massive series. There's a lot to cover. It is much easier for me to ask someone else to do the editing and just to pay him to do it. And also in that, if you have been watching the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth series, and I'm sure you probably have watched other videos of mine, definitely give your opinions on the editing style. I find the editing style to be very humorous. I personally really enjoy it, but I have had comments from people saying that it's not their favorite. They would rather go back to my more simplistic uh, part of way of doing my editing the way that's always been done. So I'm totally up to hear opinions. I would love to. That way I can know what decisions to make best going forward. So once again, just recapitulating everything. If you're a paid member, there's four new videos a week. If you're not a paid new, if you're a general member, four new videos a week. If you follow me on TikTok, I will start making kind of more educational updates. We're gonna be talking about demos and gaming news and I'll post some of the like highlights from streams or videos, but it's largely going to be keeping up with gaming news the way that I would, which is very much in my own opinion and my own humor style because I used to make that content for TikTok back in the day and I did really enjoy it. It was a great way for me to keep updated on all the new releases that were coming about. So I am getting back into that. If you wanna follow me on threads and Twitter. That's where I kind of throw in my personal thoughts and maybe get into arguments with people about the video game industry or share what I'm currently working on or if I finished a game already. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest following me on Instagram. I have one, but do I post there? No, I'm far too busy making videos to take photos, apparently. I almost never take photos. Some point, maybe I will get around to it. Just set up stuff and new stuff that's going on the shelves, and maybe one day we'll start doing cosplays. And at one point or another, when I finally get all of my gaming stuff back under my belt and I feel comfortable with the progress that we are making, I will be getting back to reaction videos I have my reactions to the fallout TV show I have them I've just been hesitant to post anything reaction wise because I don't want to get anyone's hopes up that this is going to become a more consistent thing quicker than it is Would I love to do movie reactions again yes because I'm severely behind on the film industry and I would love to catch up with you guys I need to be watching classics and new releases and there's just so much that piques my interest I would love to do a reaction to the original alien movies and then to Romulus I've heard Romulus is fantastic especially because we're getting a sequel to alien isolation at some point which I thought was a very fun game game.
I could yap and yap for hours. If you've ever joined me on stream, I can literally yap until the cows come home and then they go away again and then we call them back again. That's how long I can be yapping. But I just felt like you guys need an update and I wanted to talk a little bit about Veilguard and my excitement for it and give anyone who has wondered what's been going on with the channel but hasn't been able to ask or maybe you did ask and I just didn't see the comment. This is where, th this is the update. We're working on getting everything back under control. We're working on more consistent updates. We are working on um, going over to TikTok a little bit more and doing a lot more updates there as far as game demos and explanations and just a little bit more educational content when it comes to being a gamer in the current state of the gaming industry. And yeah, follow me on all my socials. If you want to watch Veilguard be played live, definitely go follow the Synthetic Live channel. That's how you're going to be able to watch it. I'll link it at the end of this video as well and I have my socials on either side and key at you know what let me know if I were to get back into movie reactions anytime soon what movie reactions would you guys like to see definitely uh, Deadpool versus Wolverine is the very top of that list because I am a Deadpool and Wolverine girly I am a comic book girly at heart if you did not know that about me so I'm excited either way there's a lot of content coming our way I'm really happy to kind of jump back in and really enjoy the environment so i'm gonna stop rambling i hope you guys have enjoyed the update video hope you join me again for more let's plays and i'll be seeing you guys very soon bye now